Here's a look at the Warre Langstroth hybrid hive that I design and sell. And so what you see here is everything that you would get when you purchase a hive. Uh, starting at the bottom, we've got our bottom board. It's a screen bottom board. We've got four boxes. Those boxes are eight frame uh, medium boxes. So they're, they're shallow uh, and they fit eight frames instead of ten for um, for the reason that they're lighter, uh, easier to manage, and actually better for the bees. And then we have this uh, very cool, very unique Warre style roof. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. So the roof itself uh, is a single piece here. You can see we have ventilation on the uh, on the front, and we have ventilation on the side. Uh, let's just pull that off. This is the Warre quilt layer. Uh, and so what it is, is a space that sits above the top uh, super and uh, it, it's really designed to increase the airflow or at least allow the bees to uh, create their own airflow. There's a, a 1 8 inch mesh metal screen on here. It's uh, galvanized and uh, what you would do is you would put burlap between the top box and this screen mesh and the bees will fill that burlap up with propolis. And so that's a substance that they collect from plants. It has antibacterial properties, uh, antifungal properties, and uh, they can then regulate the airflow through this hive. The bees themselves can add or subtract propolis from that uh, burlap layer to get the optimum airflow that they're looking for. The, one of the features that I built into this uh, quilt layer is a top entrance. There's the entrance reducer. You can you can get, choose to give them the top entrance or not, depending on your preference. One of the things that I wanted to do with this hive was uh, have the option of picking up a nuke. So where I live, the uh, conventional beekeepers use deep frames, and because this is a these are these are shallow boxes, uh, they don't fit. And so what I've done is I've created this here. It's a uh, I think two and seven eighths inches deep, and what it does is it adapts a regular shallow box into a deep box. And so when you first get those uh, those frames from a nuke, you can put that on top of your box. You can put in those deep frames. Uh, you slide a couple extra deep frames in there to finish off the box, and from then on in, you use the shallow. Each of these boxes is made out of pine. And uh, they're all stuck together using finger joints, so they're nice and strong, and a, uh, a an exterior water-resistant glue. Um, all of the boxes have handles on all four sides for convenience. Uh, these boxes, because they're eight frames and because they're shallow and they're filled with honey, they're about 45-50 pounds. Um, in comparison, a deep a uh, 10 frame box is going to be 90, 100 pounds filled with honey. So uh, I find that this actually works better for the bees in that the boxes are easier for the bees to uh, to work with in the winter. There's less space for them to heat. Uh, behaves a little bit more like a, like a tree trunk. And it's definitely a lot easier on the beekeeper who is lifting 50 pounds instead of 100 pounds. These are the frames that I use in these boxes. So they are uh, they're medium frames. There actually is technically a shallow frame. It's even shallower than this. Though a lot of bee supply stores will call these ones shallow. Uh, you can choose to use foundation. So it's exactly the same Langstroth uh, frame. It's the same dimension. The only difference with this hive is we're using eight uh, and we're using the, uh, the, the shallower frames. Uh, you can add the foundation. What I like to do is I like to add a little wooden strip um, down the top and the bottom and just like this comb here the bees will dr will use that as a guide and draw out their own comb and so what you have is really nice clean comb um, I like to remove that comb from the hive after you know the season or a couple years at the most and, and so they're always cycling through making nice clean cone keep, keeping diseases out keeping uh, you know anything that can build up in that wax and uh, getting that out of the hive uh, the other thing about building the own your own, letting the bees build their own comb is they tend to like building a slightly smaller cell size than uh, they do with foundation, and uh, the the bees are a little bit smaller, um, 
but they they don't spend as much time uh, as brood and as a result of the smaller cell size and a little bit less time uh, as brood there's a, there's a decrease uh, effect of the mites. Now that's not to say that your mite problem is gone. Clearly mites are, are something to, to be mindful of, but it's just one of the strategies uh, that you can use. Anything to, to knock them down, just you know, percentage here, percentage there, uh, really adds up. So eight of these would just fit nicely in here, just like that. The thing about the dimensions of, of, of a beehive is, um, you know, that they're not arbitrary. Uh, and it's, it's really important to recognize uh, some of the natural behavior that, that, that bees exhibit um, and the natural structure. And so if this is, this is a comb here, you can imagine, let's imagine it's filled up entirely with, uh, with, with, um, with comb and, uh, or foundation. And you have one frame here and you've got one frame here and you've got one frame here and you've got one frame here. Let's imagine that you're a honeybee living between uh, this frame and that frame there. Now, if you want to move through the hive, it's really easy for you to move front and back. You can move through the channel between the comb. If you want to move up and down, that's very easy too. You can move between the channel of the comb. But if all the comb is drawn out, it's very difficult for you to move side to side in a hive. And so as a result, this dimension from the width of the hive is extremely important because you can imagine, and this happens on those 10 frame hives, is you have, this is about the size of your, your, your ball of brood, or your, your overwintering, not ball of brood, but your, your overwintering bees, all staying warm. And you can imagine that if there's honey in these outside frames, and they're in the center, they have a hard time actually moving uh, laterally, perpendicular to the frames, and they can actually, it's not unheard of for bees to starve to death and be mere inches away from some honey. So by having a hive that's eight frames instead of 10 frames, it's actually the width of that overwintering ball of bees and they can always move up, they can always move front and back, uh, and so the chances that they're gonna you know, eat their way into a corner and, uh, and run out of food is, is much, much less. Not only that, but the boxes are lighter uh, so they're easier for the beekeeper to manage. There's, uh, the bees have no problem uh, using these medium frames as brood boxes. Uh, so you just, one size box fits all. You don't need to worry about uh, picking up two different types of frames or two, two different types of boxes. Um, the different colors you see here in the, uh, in the hive are due to the fact that the, these bottom two boxes have been treated with a linseed oil. I really like the natural look of these hives. And so I wanted to obviously protect them, but wanted to do it in such a way to, that, would, uh, that would preserve their, uh, kind of the charm that they have. Uh, I do reapply that linseed oil uh, once a year. Um, these bottom two boxes have been used, and so they've been outside for a season, uh, and they've weathered quite well. This, this top box was just, uh, just freshly made a day or two ago. Here's a look at our eight frame screened bottom board. And so it's a little bit wider than that conventional bottom board to accommodate the eight frames versus uh, 10 frames wide. Um, it, it does have the 1 8 inch hardware mesh on the bottom. The idea here is that in addition to fantastic ventilation, what you get is uh, the mites, as, or sorry, the bees as they groom themselves will drop mites from the hive. And in this particular case, uh, the mites fall through this screen bottom board. Now, if you take a look here, there is a little channel on either side, and that does offer the, um, the ability to slide in a piece of, uh, of, of poly. Um, sorry, it's a, it's a corrugated uh, plastic board, and you can use that for mite counts. Uh, you can also use that to close things up in the winter, so you choose. Uh, here's the entrance, re entrance reducer. Uh, I measured this, I determined the size of this entrance reducer based upon the uh, Warre's original design. Uh, so I actually don't remove it in the summer. I, I keep this year round, this little space here, uh, and that includes the winter. I find that in the summer the bees have no problem making their way in and out of there, and with this smaller entrance size uh, it's easier to defend 
One of the great things about this hive setup is you can manage it exactly like a, a, a regular Langstroth or you can manage it like a Warre. Um, I personally like the Warre method uh, and if you're not familiar with it, he, uh, he observed a lot of bees in nature and what they do is they head into a cavity such as a, a hollow tree and they head to the very top of the tree. So if this is if this is our tree here, which is what a hive is, it's a modified tree, the bees would go in and they would head up to the very top. Uh, they wouldn't start at the bottom, they're gonna go to the very top and they're gonna start building comb. Now the comb, they're gonna start by attaching it to that the top surface and they're gonna slowly build their way down and the first thing that they're gonna do the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to, uh, she's going to start laying eggs, the bees are going to go and collect pollen, they've got to get that brood going as soon as they can, and the, and the bees, the worker bees will continue building comb downwards. As new comb is built downwards, the queen will move down into that new fresh comb and will, and the brood as they hatch, they leave that older comb, they start foraging, and that original comb up high ends up being backfilled with honey. So what that means is that in a tree trunk, you end up with honey, 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 honey brood. And in the winter time, they, the, the brood ball is going to be at the bottom, and they're slowly going to consume that honey back up with the heat and raise up, and hopefully by spring, the, uh, they still have some food left and the nectar starts flowing again and then they continue that process. So they build down, 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 brood moves down, brood moves down, brood moves down, honey goes behind them and the fall they start consuming their way back up, consuming up, up, up and then spring and they basically just like a little elevator go up and down. Uh, so really the way that we tend to manage our hives from the top is, is the opposite of what the bees naturally want to do. And so the way that Warre decided to manage his hives was you put your boxes on and uh, you wait for those bees to move down, building their comb down, and move the brood down. And when the brood is in this bottom box, you lift the entire hive up and you throw another box on the bottom. And then they keep moving down, down, down. They reach the bottom, you lift the whole hive up, you throw another box on the bottom. And they keep moving down. And so what you end up with is that is that tree structure with all of the honey at the top and the brood at the bottom. There's never a need for a queen excluder. Uh, you can always add boxes onto the bottom as they reach it and you can always pull full boxes of honey off the top. Now as long as you leave them enough honey for winter, they're going to survive and continue this process. Um, the challenge is, is you need to lift your entire hive up and put an extra box on the bottom, um, which is a little bit tricky to do. Though if you're doing hive inspections anyway, you're kind of moving things around. You can always pull off these full boxes of honey when they're, when they're full, sort of mid-season. Uh, the other thing about why I, did, why I wanted to go with these eight frame boxes is they're, and, and shallow, is that they're much lighter. And so now I'm lifting 50 pounds at a time instead of 100, which is a, kind of a big deal um, if, you've got, uh, if you've got a few hives. 